Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to Why Do People Like Lord Shiva? So, hmm, Shiva. I know this is something that Sadhguru, I believe Sadhguru is a follower of Shiva, I think? And according to Sadhguru, Shiva is, the definition of it is that which is not. Um, also, he told the story about Shiva, about marrying his wife. And he was considered to be the most beautiful man, I believe. Anyways, when I was looking up for the uh, the thumbnail for this thing, and it had, I look up by the title of the video, and it says that uh, Shiva's the highest among all the Hindu gods. Is that true? Because I know there's Shiva, Vishnu, and, and Brahma. Brahma is more... I If I remember correctly, and please let me know if I'm right or wrong, Brahma is there's many brahmas uh one for every universe it's really weird though because according to said guru shiva didn't know about the multiverse but i believe is it vishnu but vishnu did if i remember correctly did i remember that story correctly and the thing is, is about, the thing is though, is that I remember was it Shiva cut off the head of Brahma, one of the heads of Brahma, because of what Brahma was doing to that universe, like creating suffering and stuff. Then all of a sudden, for some other reason, or, uh, God, it's been a while since I heard the story, but I think Vishnu showed the reality that there are many different realities. Maybe maybe those are two different stories. But there's a reality where Brahma has millions of heads, or or three heads, two heads, five heads, six heads, well, you know, however many heads there is, and there are an infinite number of Brahmas, well, however many universes there are, and there's only one Vishnu and one Shiva. Am I correct in remembering that? But anyways, let's go get started. <laughs> When you look at some of the personalities in the Hindu tradition, they reflect this personality. For example, the one that I find very much reflecting this third personality, the third personality is Shiva. And I say, has Shiva ever taken birth on earth? When you do the story of Rama, you say Hanuman was actually, if you like, an incarnation of Shiva, helping out Ram. You know, Ram gets into difficulty, so of course Shiva has to come and sort him out. And then, you see, when I look at Swami Vivekananda, I look at this personality sitting in meditation, I say, ah, that is a piece of Shiva that fell down to earth. You see? So you can say Shiva Paras did not take birth, but when I look at some of these personalities, everything that can be attributed to Shiva can be attributed, attributed to such personalities. So what are the key features of Shiva? First of all, the name Shiva itself signifies something unique that is necessary. You see, when you want to build relation with this super personality, say Vishnu, uh, you know, coming down to earth as Ram or Krishna, you need to build up a relationship. And of course, the only way the relationship comes to fruition is if they give their grace to you. They say, okay, I like you, so you can see me now, and I'll pull you towards me. You need grace of God. There's God, and there's God's grace. With Shiva, you get two for the price of one. So you get God and God's grace combined. Shiva means grace. So it is not God, but it's a God and God's grace rolled together. That's the meaning of the word Shiva. And what are the unique features of the Shiva? makes him very endearing and a lot of people are attracted to Shiva because the reason is this Shiva is called Ashutosh it means easy to please you see this vision is a tricky chap it takes a lot of hard work you know like poor Dhru had to spend so many days and months and years meditating and vision world was tricky chap the Shiva things are easy peasy a little bit of Bilva leaves he says, yeah, what do you want now? <laughs> no, he pops up straight away. He's a kind of easy chap. Because I told you, his name is Grace. So when you say, Shiva, you invoke this Grace straight away. He says, yeah, yes, what can I do for you? Straight away. Interesting. So is Shiva that which is not, or is it Grace? This part of the story kind of makes sense to another story that I heard um, of Shiva. Because I, I believe Shiva at one point said, it was either 
I think it was the Devies. I'm not sure. It was the demons, in a sense. I don't know what they're called. I forgot. But he said that he'll give them one wish or something like that. And um, this one demon asked for something that could kill the gods. And Shiva, being honor being honorable or whatever, just because he, he gave his word, gave him the device that would kill Shiva. Because this devil was trying, it was been trying so much to kill Shiva, but finally he was given that device, or whatever it may be, that tool to kill uh, them gods, and then Shiva had to run away, I think, to Vishnu, I believe, if I remember the story correctly, and asked Vishnu to say, "Hey, look, you know, you got to stop him. <laughs> I gave him something that could kill, you know, gods, or maybe just Shiva." And uh, Vishnu turned into, I think, a, a woman and did something. I, if, uh, again, uh, I think that's the story. Well, that makes sense then with how Shiva's very easy to please. So the fact that he was willing to give even someone, a demon, something that could kill Shiva. Asutosh. Well, when I say easy to please, what does it mean? The ritualistic aspect that is visible, say in the Vaishnavite tradition, they are elaborate. The worship is very elaborate. You must do this, 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 this. You must follow through, otherwise Vishnu will get mad at you. Instead of being happy with you, he'll be really annoyed with you. But Shiva may say, make a mess. He says, ah, oh, my sweet boy, he's making a mess, but he loves me. Off he comes, straight away. He says, oh, go away, Shiva, I didn't ask for you. But, no, but you were praying, you know. Easy to please in the ritualistic aspects, cut to the minimum, minimum. This is why it's called Ashutosh, easy to please. Special feature. Another feature about Shiva that you like is this, that I like is this. You see, with the Vaishnavite tradition, you can never really bridge the gap between the idea of God as some super personality you're building links with and God as your essential nature. That remains distant. You are not even allowed to think like that. You are nobody. God is everything and you are nobody. You are made to think like that. In fact, the way you can distinguish between the Shiva and the, and the Vaishnava tradition, tradition is very nice. It's Hari Hara. You heard the word Hari Hara. Hari means one who attracts. So Vishnu looks very grand, well dressed, you know, and he's always so attractive. And Shiva is on the other extreme. Hara, Harati from Harati. He's going to demolish all this grandier business. Ro is Ro. So even you see Shiva, any ground, do you see golden thrones or anything like that? No, just ash, poor chap, ash, and little animal skin around his waist, and that's Shiva. So he's broken through all this nonsense. He said, no, there are two ways of making spiritual progress. First, you get attracted to these marvelous godly qualities of Vishnu and Ram and Krishna. The second way to make spiritual progress is to recognize that all this is external, superficial. I want the heart of the matter. I want spirit. So I'm going to do Harati. Remove this distraction of external showmanship and go to the heart of the matter. This is the feature of Shiva. That's why it's Hari, Harati. There's a difference between Hari and Hara. You see, with Shiva, this unique feature is visible. Not only can you relate to God as some super being that you say, Oh God, I love you. Please show your grace on me. He says, Don't you see? I am your essential nature. I am very much part of you. Where else will you search for me? I am your innermost self. So with the Shiva tradition, you have this unique feature. You can say, you can equate yourself with Shiva. In the Vaishnava tradition, if you went to any Vishnu temple and started saying you are equal to Vishnu, four people will come and do tingatori and throw you out. You know, how dare you, is an arrogant chap. In the Shiva tradition, if you don't do it, they say, he has not understood the whole idea of Shiva. And this is the lovely stuff from Adi Shankara. One of the it's, it's quoted in your in the notes. It says, "You can say Shivo Ham, Shivo Ham," and this is not an arrogant comment. It is it's a very humbling comment, saying, "My essential nature, despite external appearance of being a real idiot and real nuisance, my essential nature, O oh Lord, is You, Shiva, Shivo Ham, Shivo Ham. I am Thee, my Lord." Now you see. Have you noticed in the Vaishnava tradition you have different ways of relating to God? You say, okay, um, Dasya Bhav, Vatsalya Bhav, Sakya Bhav, uh, Madhur Bhav, lovely, lovely ways of relating to God. In the Shiva tradition, what, what power do you have? 
What is the closest relationship you can have with anybody? Tell me. With yourself. See the power of Shiva tradition. He's saying, don't you see? The, the, the closest relationship you have with anything, forget about God, is an external thought. It's just a thought process. It's your true self, with your true being. So the idea of the Shiva tradition is build relation with your true self. So begin to ignore your, your false or this external self, which is quite a nuisance anyway, and recognize your true, true, true being as one with God, as Shiva. It's not an arrogant comment. It is saying, don't you see, the closest you can get to anybody is to yourself. And your real self is Shiva, Shivoham, Shivoham, very visible in the Shiva tradition. There's another lovely feature to the Shiva tradition that you must immediately recognize and give full marks. In the Vaishnava tradition, the idea of female is still secondary, even though they say, no, 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 that's the power of God and all that. It's still secondary, because when you see Vishnu, you know, lying you know, on the bed of serpent, and who is massaging his feet day and night, day and night? Poor Lakshmiji. You can give her grandia, say, oh, Lakshmi Ji means, you know, but why is she massaging all the time? It's not fair. With the Shiva tradition, it's equal emphasis paid to both the genders. And you see this marvelous idea of Ardh Narishwar. First time, the idea that God and God's power are strongly linked, you cannot separate them. Given dignity, equally, you know, making bringing the idea of equality, very, making it very visible. Artha Narishwara, the idea that God can be thought of as female too. So this idea, again, not in the Vaishnava tradition, in the Shiva tradition. So I'm just you know, scoring points for the Shiva tradition, of course. But then when I talk of Vishnu, I say, oh, I love them as well. So you get caught up. When you look at them, they go there. So why am I saying this? Because it's, you should be able to recognize that the reason why Hindus don't feel, un, you know, they don't feel that something has gone wrong, they are not scoring points, they are saying that the way your mental makeup is will decide which particular aspect of Godhead you are attracted to. So your own mental makeup in a way will dictate whether you are attracted to Ram, goody goody straightforward chap, Krishna this naughty chap with pluralism, or Shiva who gives you the highest dignity, you decide. So in a way it allows us this opening of thinking about spirituality in a variety of different ways, it is open to that. So these are the unique features of the Shiva tradition. Hmm. <clears throat> I wonder if within these traditions they also see that uh, even Shiva, Vishnu, Ram, or in Krishna are not like the highest level. That uh, obviously um, liberation, awareness, um, seeing one's true self is the highest awareness. I'm not sure. Um, I, I haven't really reacted to any videos about the Shiva tradition or Vishnu tradition or anything like that, so I'm not sure. I know Advaita Vedanta says that. Um, I know Sadhguru says that. You know, obviously Sadhguru says, you know, God is just a stepping stone. You must realize oneself. But in this tradition, the Shiva, Vishnu uh, traditions are. are is Shiva and Vishnu the highest level or is it like just bhakti yoga where you, you just do pure devotion and be liberated that way in these in this two or in however many traditions there are in terms of the gods I suppose because I am uh, I'm not I, again like I said I've not really watched any of the videos I've watched a few Shiva videos because I think Sadguru and maybe only Sadhguru, I, I don't know if I've seen Swami Taratma, nope, Swami uh, Sarvapriyananda talks about Shiva. But it's, it seems like folktale in some sense. Um, I know Sadhguru talks about how these are real people that walk the earth with just, um, how to say, uh, very amazing qualities. It could be very well, um, but... I have not heard about the traditions or people that are following him. Although Sadhguru does, doesn't he? Does he follow Shiva or Adiyogi? Adiyogi is the first yogi, but is Shiva the first yogi? I think so, right? Again, I, I've heard Adiyogi. I know that means the first yogi. And I think Sadhguru says Shiva is Adiyogi, the first yogi. 
Let me know. <laughs> a lot of questions here. Anyways, that's the end of this uh, reaction. Why do people like Lord Shiva? If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.